live in Nashville, Tennessee. You are listening to the Nashville Daily Podcast. Nashville's number one daily podcast. Brought to you by Think Nashville. Think Nashville. Think Brad. Think Brad. It's Nashville Daily Podcast. Hey, Nashville, and welcome to the Nashville Daily Podcast. I am your co-host, Stuart Deming, and today's episode is brought to you by Brad Reynolds. If you're looking for real estate in the Nashville market, make sure to visit him at thinkbrad.com, subscribe to his YouTube channel, Think Brad, or call him or text him 615-856-3270, and also head over to nashvilledailypodcast.com if you're ever in the need to uh, to read some of the sources that we have. Nashville Daily Podcast is in the show notes. Um You can also visit that website. So coming in hot is new, not renderings. This is actually open now in the factory in Franklin. They they officially call it, they have a name for everything, a preview, a first look, all of these things. (laughs) I don't even know. Yeah. This is a photo opportunity. I, I almost thought it was a rendering. And then I was like, oh, no, those are real. They're, they're real people. Yeah, they're there. real people. Because the reason you can tell they're real people is because of all the wrinkles in the shirts. <laughs> renderings don't have wrinkles in shirts. Yeah. It's very much, it's kind of staged like a rendering, which shows that renderings are actually pretty realistic in how they like stage people. Yeah. Like you have people but walking, it's, it's standing, the wrinkles. talking. It's all in the wrinkles. People in renderings don't have wrinkles. Yeah. I think people, that's, uh, their shirts. I think we need to look anything. that up. They just, they don't have wrinkles. There's a lot of wrinkles in this photo. Okay. So this, this is in the factory and uh, I don't have the website open, but we're, we're, so, we're sourcing this from Williamson source. Uh, you get what I'm getting there. Uh, but this is the first look at what is this called? This is called the sky lounge or skylight. This is their grand hall and skylight bar at the factory at Franklin. That's what it is. Uh, go ahead and show the photos, Nick. Um, okay. So nice little. Looks like vintage milk glass, but it's not. Okay, nice little couch. Oh, that's cool. Nice. Okay, carpet. Okay. That looks cool. That looks way that looks way better than what was previously there with the restrooms. Some cocktails and all right, beer. All right. And okay. this is this is not the steakhouse, right? This is no, just this is, the this is kind just of skylight a, bar yep. that's in the middle there. Which the steakhouse, I think, is yeah. going to the right of this if you enter through the entrance okay. or to the left. Okay. It's going to one of them. I don't know. Yeah. No, I'm excited for, for that to open. Once that entire side opens, um, I think it's going to be I wonder if they took that. Really it cool. looks like that they took down the big wall in the factory, too. Yeah, which is which is, is good. Uh, kind of shows that, hey, we're ready to kind of open some other things up. Hopefully the steakhouse is uh, is going to come soon. But uh, I, I like that. Uh bar i think that's there's there's two thoughts that i have with it skylight bar it's cool within itself um but the nashville has a very interesting um way of saying hey look we did a thing by inviting either (laughs) just like making cocktails Mm -hmm. or uh like a, a bar scene to it which i know a lot of people enjoy but i'm it's it's you know if the factory's gonna close for that side for a year and only a bar opens after this you know i'm excited for the rest to kind of come together as well oh yeah like the hattie bees and all of these other things new outside area as well so i'm excited for that and i've I've been saying this for a while um a while is like a month uh (laughs) but i think the factory is going to be the food mecca of franklin just like you have these districts of Nashville, like 12 South, you yeah. have Germantown, you have Fifth and Broad. These these have become food me- meccas in their neighborhoods. Yeah. I think the factory is going to be this incredible food mecca that's only found in Williamson County, like with that type of thing. Because like the L&L market is kind of like a food mecca, kind of. It, it's like a micro food mecca. But compared to yeah. what the factory is and what the factory is going to be in six to eight months. Yeah. Like it, it's there's no comparison. Yeah. So it would be interesting to see like where a food market like that would go into like Wilson County and Rutherford County, because I assume every county here in the next five years will have something like this. Yeah, I think I think at they least will. in the It'll surrounding probably, areas of Nashville. Yeah, I think those will probably have to be close to the uh, the downtown areas of those. Well, like in Clarksville, it's going to be towns. right next to the new arena. Yeah, like um, Wilson County, maybe downtown, maybe downtown Lebanon. 
Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Mount Julia would say they're a food mecca now, but it's all chain restaurants. There's like, <laughs> it's all chain restaurants and then ML Rose. Yeah. They do have a, is it a Martin's? They have a Martin's in yeah, Providence. Martin's, a Martin's. Yep. Yeah. But that's like the only two like <laughs> local restaurants. Yeah. Yeah. In yeah. Mount Julia, or, so. yeah. Or national restaurants that have kind of made their way into there. I'm sure there's a lot of smaller ones that uh, we're not terribly familiar with. That's true. Up there. That is true. We don't go out to Mount Julia that often. Uh, speaking of Nashville restaurants, there's a restaurant that opened during the height of the pandemic in 2020. They initially started as a food truck in 2016, 2017. And uh, this is Shotgun Willie's Barbecue. They are now about, they just announced a, an expansion to the Madison area. And there, this so, is going to be reportingly open in September. So I think they are relocating to Madison from East, East Nashville. Nashville. Um, and so it's going to be at a larger location. Um, I, I guess there's enough traffic on Gallatin in the Madison area to support that. Um, because I East Nashville has a ton of traffic on Gallatin. Well, so it's, it's not that far of a move. So I have Greg, the Google guy up and running. Yeah. Cause they're um, towards the end of Gallatin. If I'm thinking yeah, like, about uh, where they are correctly, like closer to that Sonic, that one Sonic, yep. I believe. Yeah. Yep. So it, they're just going basically across Briley Parkway. Oh, okay. So it, it's not, not that far. This is where the East side bowl is. So they're coming into this, where this old hurts. Oh, was. Okay. Um, so basically that's, they're not moving far. It's like maybe three miles, maybe four miles. And they're moving down the road. So that's I think three, like, three or four miles on Gallatin is it's a lot. That's, that's a lot. But, but if they're just moving across Briley, that's, that's not too far. Well, let me look up their current location. Real quick. Yeah. Uh, I've never been, have you been? Yes. Okay. Uh, their brisket's really good. Okay. Um, it's been, it's been a long time. I had their brisket in the food truck. Okay. I've never had their brisket in uh, their actual physical location. So uh, according okay. to the business so, journal, the okay. expansion is going to have more seating, large outdoor ranch at shotgun willies and a thousand gallon primitive pit smoker. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. So this is where they are in East Nashville. This little red mark right here. They're moving to where this green mark is right here at Eastside bowl. Wow. That really is right across Briley. So that's probably what three miles, maybe Oh, let's do a directions. Yeah. I bet it's a mile East side bowl. 1.4 miles. There you go. Okay, that's not terrible. No. No. Fans of Shotgun it's Willies still, will not still, have to go very far. Yeah, it's still the <laughs> same, like, in order at to a do mile, that. Yeah. you might as well just go to it. Yeah. All right, so there's a few other restaurants uh, that are announcing openings. This is according to the Nashville Business Journal, the Restaurant Roundup, the thing that they do every week. Uh, the first one is going to be Fieldhouse Tavern. Uh, this is going to be opening in the nations as early as June. Um, this is going to be a, a smaller bar with 125 or 125 seats inside. It's not just a bar. It's a restaurant as well with 100 yep. people that can sit outside. So this is in the former space. I saw that this had closed down of El Paseo Cantina. Is that the one that we, we filmed in front of? It is. We oh, filmed in really front nice of there location. for our, our nation's. Uh, our nation's video. This is and why we have to do videos every single year yeah. because things close so yeah. often. Yeah. And uh, they had a big outdoor area, but it was mostly used when we saw it during the pandemic for like dogs and a, and a dog park yeah. area. Um, so I'm not sure if Fieldhouse Tavern is going to use it for the same thing. But yeah, I walked by there um, <clears throat> not too long ago. So I went to 51st Deli, mm -hmm. which is fantastic. And then uh, I noticed that there was no branding on the on that restaurant for uh, where El Paseo the Cantina. That's the reason why. So Fieldhouse Tavern will be there. So they're going to have bar food, like your typical bar food, sandwiches, wings, wraps, fries, and other sports bar fare. Uh, they're also going to have live music. This is a highlight from the Business Journal, an indoor jukebox. Oh, okay. That's nice. Cornhole weekend brunches and a place to catch a games. There you go. Um, this one I'm excited about. I've not had it, but the picture at the top of the National Business Journal article looks incredible. Um, Lily's Hot Chicken. They're owned by Chris and uh, Navanda. Lily will open outside the market house at the Nashville or inside the market house at the National Farmers Market this spring. I'm excited. Um, can we show that top photo in this article? Uh, let's show their Instagram. Oh, okay. But it, it looks incredible. They began as a food truck in 2021. 
Uh, so now they will have a permanent home. I think they'll do great. All right. So we have their Instagram pulled up. That looks great. That, that looks, looks really good. That looks, some, that looks, looks some very good spicy. Hot chicken. <laughs> that looks spicy too. All right. So this is their Instagram. Uh, I like this as whole chicken. That's cool. Oh my gosh. That is whole chicken. They may, they may be doing the only ones doing whole chicken. All right. This looks spicy. It looks delicious. I'm excited to try it. Um, also joining Lily's in the farmer's market, uh, pink door cookies is yes. going in there. Um, pink door, Bella okay. Nashville pizzerias going in there as well. Pink door is interesting because they would always be at the farmer's market. So they would have a oh. vendor, like a, a stand outside oh. of the farmer's market on Fridays and Saturdays. Yeah. So they probably were so popular at that little stand of farmer's markets. Like, Hey, you need to be inside. Interesting. So every single time I went, like I'll always pass pink door cookies. I'm like, I like your cookies, <laughs> but I, uh, I need to be eating my veggies. There you go. Um, Oh, they're going to be, uh, Lily's going to be offering peach cobbler as well, which is very Fried nice. chicken and peach cobbler is yeah. nice. Uh, so there, there's another restaurant that is just reopened. I believe this last week, right? Monday. It opened Friday. It opened Friday. Yeah. Uh, so this is a Latin American themed restaurant, hypothetically Tex-Mix. I, I, I think that's what it's classified as. All right. It will open last week. Uh, we're having, um, Brandon style. And what's his, the other guy who's coming on Steven Steven. Uh, so Brandon and Steven will be on the podcast tomorrow, uh, to talk about their opening of Chago's cantina. Um, and it, it, this is, it's, uh, been open for more than 11 years. It closed about a year ago and it reopening under new management of Brandon and Steven. It's reopening as Chago's Belmont cantina. Um, and, uh, Brandon and, uh, Steven are the, uh, owners and director of operations, uh, mm-hmm. for mayor Bowles and green Hills grill. Um, so excited to, to, uh, really talk about that tomorrow. So stay tuned for that. All right. Well, I had, um, I, I, I did eat locally and I had a really interesting experience. Um, I'm not going to tell the name of the place cause I don't want to hurt them yeah in yeah, the yeah. Sense of whatever. yeah uh so i got a i got a milkshake from this place and um i get milkshakes from this place all the time and can we is, say can we say this is this this is a place that we don't normally talk about right uh no okay uh sometimes okay very sometimes very very rarely uh, yeah. yes uh so i get a milkshake from this place and um i get this peanut butter milkshake okay with, so it has like these little peanut butter cups in and everything yeah and yeah, yeah. This milkshake it's fantastic yeah so i uh, i'm bradley parkway and i'm I, i'm chugging this milkshake i'm just like <laughs> drinking it drinking it drinking it and then uh at the i get to the red light on bradley parkway and I take off the lid and i'm like i'm about to eat these peanut butter cups uh, yo oh no and uh go to put my Slush back with the the peanut butter cups, and I oh, no. bite on something that was oh no really hard oh no, and I was like, and I I like almost threw up yeah, in, in my cup, yeah, and uh, it turned out to be an acrylic fingernail oh. in my milkshake oh. oh, that milkshake did not bring all the boys to the ERs, folks. Made me want to throw up. So that was a, <laughs> that, that was a really interesting food experience, but this stuff happens to me all the time. <sighs> Like stuff like this in the food world happens to me all the time. <laughs> so I was about to say, you are you are riskier in the food world. Yeah, but that was not a risky move. That, that was, was not risky. <laughs> that was not risky, folks. Um, it was disgusting. Okay. So, okay. Ugh, yeah. Do you have is... any bad food experiences, Aaron? Um, luckily, I've not had anything like that. So, not anything like just knock on some wood. Yeah, just like not not anything offhand where I was like it was that bad that it's always at the forefront of my mind for food stories. So yeah. uh, lucky in that regard. Well, I've 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 seen them all, but it's still not as bad as that time of that restaurant taking out their utensils and everything and washing it in the Cumberland River. Yeah, yeah, that, that was, happened that here was in bad. Nashville. That happened <laughs> that here was in Nashville. Bad. So, so if you're going to a restaurant near the Cumberland River, be careful. Go talk to their dishwashers. Yeah, no, you, I'm just kidding. There may be a catfish in your <laughs> <laughs> utensils. Uh, so recently, we've been covering this a lot on the podcast. The state of Tennessee feels like they're coming after Metro Nashville and it feels <laughs> like it. They, they are. They are. <laughs> they, yeah. Let's be honest. They are. Uh, so the reason for this is Metro council decided not to host the 2024 RNC. 
and that they basically said, Correct. yeah, we're not doing this yeah, because they, of security they, concerns and yeah, a few other the reasons. Official, the official version is that they uh, did not feel comfortable sending a bid because of, quote unquote, security, security concerns security. Uh, for an event that would not have even this was the last year when they decided this. Mm -hmm. This event wouldn't even happen for another year, uh, basically year plus yeah, year and a half. Um, but I, I do want to say before we get into this, these are these are topics that, uh, you know, you're going to be talking about with friends. These are topics that you're going to be talking about with you, with your coworkers. Yeah, so how often are you going to be talking about these topics? I don't know. Like, but we're, like we're here on, to two, on, on two of these topics. Yeah. Do you really care. Well, no matter if you care or not, or your coworkers care or not. Uh, one thing that you will always need to be energized to talk about these topics is coffee. I yeah, I agree. And uh, the best way to uh, be energized and to take in all this information is to have a cup of blessed day coffee here at your side. Like we do right now, you can go to blessed right now and you can get 20% off of your order with the discount code XPLR 20 at checkout. And if you're in the Nashville area, you get free delivery. This has some of blessed day coffee has some of the most fresh and sustainable roasts here in the, I would say probably the state. I mean, it's incredible. Their flavors are amazing. Um, you can get a whole bean, you can get pre-ground coffee, uh, desired to, you know, what you're going to be brewing with, whether it's cold brew or French press or, uh, espresso or just a regular drip coffee machine. Uh, but whatever you need, they will have you covered there. Go to blessedaycoffee.com, use that discount code and don't forget about that free delivery in the Nashville area. All right. So, What's good? We, we have a few things that is between the state and, and metro. And I think the, the first thing that we need to get to is an update on the uh, the the potential to slash the metro council size from 40 to 20. Stuart, what's the latest on that? Yeah, so this is coming from the Nashville Business Journal, uh, a new state law capping Metro Council at 20 seats. This is not just particularly aimed at Metro Nashville, <laughs> this, <laughs> with, with the exception that the only the only council in the state of Tennessee <laughs> is over, Metro over, Council of 20 over, over 20. Yeah. So <laughs> when, when people say, oh, this is aimed at Nashville, no, this goes across the entire state. And people <laughs> aren't talking about that because it, it goes across the entire state. It, it goes because it goes across the entire state, but it only affects it, it, one but county. But it only affects yeah, Nashville. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, okay, I'll, I'll restart. A new state law capping Metro Council at 20 seats will not take effect until 2027 election, said State uh, Attorney General Jonathan Skirmetti. Is that how you say his name? Uh, Skirmetti. Skirmetti. It's very odd. Spelling. It looks like an I in my computer. Okay. It's yeah, yeah. R. Okay. Uh, announced Monday. Um, so, recently, there was a three panel judge. This happened like a week and a half ago or two weeks ago. There was a three panel judge from the different three grand divisions of the state of Tennessee. Yes. That said, Hey, uh, Metro lawsuit right now, there's a Metro lawsuit against the state of Tennessee and the state officials yep. basically about this bill that yes. became law, I believe in mid March. And the three judges said, Hey, we're going to put a, we're going to post on this. So it's Metro an filed an injunction. Yep. So they filed a lawsuit and filed an injunction that basically said, stop, you know, until this gets figured out, uh, like rule in our favor for an injunction. Yeah. Um, so so we, we have no idea what's happening with the lawsuit side of things. Right. Right now, this is law in the state of Tennessee, but it's not going it, to go into effect right. until 2027. Well, so because I, I believe the state appealed, Skirmetti is not appealing the injunction. The injunction. Yep. Uh, so it's kind of still in limbo right now. The law is not in effect because of the injunction. Um, so it, it is kind of in the, the law limbo right now. Um, he So Scrimetti will not appeal the injunction issued by a three court judge um, or Scrimetti. Sorry. He is. He's not the one who they, the state did not appeal is what happened. Yes. Um, issued by the injunction issued by a three court uh, judge as part of this lawsuit. Um, so it, it, because even if I think they they kind of figured out like, hey, even if we appeal it, like nothing's going to happen as far as the, the uh, election's not going to actually happen right now. Like even if we tried to appeal it because the process would be so long yep. to determine what's happening that it wouldn't affect anything until the next Metro Council election after the current one here in August. Yeah. So the, the current election's happening August 3rd. Uh, we've we've talked about this. There's been over what two dozen people that have announced that they're running for some type of metro council member. Correct. 
So there's just a lot. And then the whole restructuring of the redistricting of the districts. Um, it, it, it's just a very fascinating conversation to be able to happen by August 3rd. So I think this, <laughs> I think this gives it way more time. Yeah. Uh, so this current election that's happening in August 3rd will not be impacted. It depends on what happens with this lawsuit over the next few years, if this is still going to happen. Yeah. But right now, Metro Council is going to stay at 40 members, uh, 35 districts with five council member at large. Yep. Uh, so the 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 part two of three in the state drama with the city is over the uh, airport board for uh, BNA, and this is one of the topics like most people on the street may not care about. Cor- this. Correct, correct. This is yeah, yeah the the uh, the Metro Council one is more of it's, your it's your it's hot gonna, topic. It's going to impact you more. Yes, yeah, uh, the, <laughs> yeah. You're right. The the BNA one. Probably not going to have a significant I, I, I think I think you're still you. going to go to the airport. You're going to fly <laughs> in and out, and then yep. you're going to leave. Yep. Um, so this is basically the, there's an update for this uh, from a statement from uh, Doug Krulin. And uh, the, the CEO has basically said in a quote, and this is in the title, uh, the, the proposed state overhaul of BNA's board has, quote, taken up the majority of the oxygen in the room. My guess is with the, the board and probably even some talk well, among even, like airport officials. Well, even with the evacuation the other day, there was oxygen leaving the room. Oh, that is very true. <laughs> yeah, people were coughing. <laughs> they were. They had, to, they had to leave to go get oxygen. The oxygen was being taken up. Um, so... Essentially, the if you haven't been caught up with this, the uh, the state is is looking to oust all of the city appointed board members and replace it with state appointed board members. And I think the mayor would have one appointee in there. Doug Krulin is is kind of he's he's neutral in all of this. Yeah. So he goes on to say this is from the National Business Journal. I'm Switzerland. I'm in the middle of two parties trying to run an airport. Uh, and then uh, th- that's basically it. He's like, I, I, that's a game I don't have any say in at this point. There you go. He's got an airport to run. That's yeah. all he's concerned about. And they're breaking records left and right. It's estimated, where is this? This was in the Business Journal. Um, it's estimated that they're going to break a record of 21 million passengers this year. Whew. That's a lot of uh, people yeah, just <laughs> moving keep, in and out. Keep on breaking those records. Yeah. I like it. All right. So the third part in this three-part series of the state Tennessee against Metro Nashville is revolving. The third one is uh, impacting the sports authority board. Yeah. So the sports authority board is the one who basically decides on grants and underwriting for different uh, sport entities here found in Nashville. And there's a lot of conflict and interesting things with this one because right now we're hopefully this evening, Metro Council is reading their second reading of the approval of the Titan Stadium. Mm. The Metro Sports Authority Board has already approved the Titan Stadium. This is going to be the second reading at Metro Council tonight. Yeah. Potentially. They may defer it again. So this is going to be interesting because uh, Metro, the, the Metro Sports Authority uh, asked the state for five hundred million in bonds, or I believe the state approved. The state approved. So the state lawmakers approved five hundred million dollars in bonds. This was not from the sports authority. That's, that's right. That's right. The the way this is written is a little bit interesting. It says Representative Ryan Williams. This is from News Channel Five of Cookville. Said the the uh, this was born of the Metro National Sports Authority's initiative ask. For five hundred million dollars in state bonds to build I, a new Tennessee Titan Titan Stadium, we don't know if that the sports authority approached Tennessee. Yeah, I I think what ended up happening is there's been a lot of conversation around this rebuilding or the the new Tennessee Titan Stadium. Right, and basically the state said, hey, this is a good tax incentive for us. Let's give five hundred million dollars yeah. in bonds. Yeah, and and, and the uh, News Channel Five even says that's not necessarily. What happened? Uh, they said Governor Bill Lee's the one who came to the legislator, asked mm-hmm. for it in his 2022 to 2023 budget. He told the public in March of last year at an event at the GM plant in Spring Hill. That's how most people, I believe, remember it. Yeah. Um, now, this is interesting. This next paragraph, the city still hasn't accepted the $500 million. Now, that could be because it has not been approved through yeah. Metro Council. Yes. Yeah, so they Once probably approved, wouldn't accept it until I, they officially, like everything has every single rubber stamp to say, we can now 
have we we can now send bulldozers and start moving dirt. Yeah, once it's approved, it's going to be like uh, that one woman from Parks and Rec. It's <laughs> always asking for money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, so this is a very interesting statement from um, Representative Ryan Williams. He says, as to who was there or not there, Metro is issuing their own bonds. And they said they ha- they didn't have the capacity to do it themselves. Yeah, so they changed the hotel law, um, the hotel tax law at that time, yeah. um, to encourage Metro to potentially move forward with this. It- it's really interesting how this is panning out. Yeah, and and uh, they're they're firing shots. Representative John Ray Clemens, a Democrat representative from Nashville, said that was wrong. He said that a, a billionaire came and asked, I guess, to contribute to this, uh, or or asked to run the board, the state to run the board. Uh, Clement said the governor willingly rolled over another member sponsored a bill to allow it, who isn't from Davidson County. Uh, he said, and that's your ground for taking over the sports authority. He said, we don't want y'all running in and trying to run our city. This isn't your first occasion. We wouldn't have the Titan stadium as if Metro didn't raise the water rates and foot the bill. Yes. And no, I think the Titan Stadium will have come here anyways because the the Adams family really liked this this market. Yeah. So if this bill becomes law for the sports authority turnover, seven members who have the longest term left on their appointment will remain. The other six members will not remain. The new persons in the terms of the bill would be two from the governor, two from the lieutenant governor, and two from the House Speaker. These changes won't go into effect into effect until 2024. Oh, they have almost a half a year. Still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, these uh, six members don't have to be from Davidson County. The other seven members are appointed by the Nashville mayor. So a little, a little bit more generous than the the airport one, where the mayor only gets one. one. Yeah, he still gets seven on the sports <laughs> authority. So, but does, yeah. does that change for every new mayor? Um. Probably. Maybe. I don't know. I think I think just when it's kind of like, I guess, like a Supreme Court judge, it, it just because a new president comes in doesn't mean they the get judge. a new. Yeah, I, it's when, is, whenever whenever the judge's term is up or when they retire or whatever. So I'm not is, is sure what the terms are for a sports authority board member. OK, but I, my guess is whenever their term is up, then they get replaced by the appointee, either by the mayor or by the state. Well, Things we don't know. Yeah. All right. Let us know in the comments. What are your <laughs> thoughts on the new restaurants coming to Nashville? And do you really care about the Metro Sports Authority or the airport board? Yeah. Let us know. We'll keep covering it. Yeah. We'll it's, keep covering it's entertaining it. to us. Yeah. Uh, but this at the is, end of the day, is this affecting your day to day life? Do you know the question of the, the Metro day, Council stuff? Possibly. Stuart, do you think this will one day become a soap opera or could become a soap opera? We should make it. I, I'm on board. Let's do it. Thank you for listening to the Nashville Daily Podcast. If you want to learn more, head to NashvilleDailyPodcast.com. You can also follow us on social media at Explore.Nash on Instagram, Nashville Daily Podcast on YouTube, and Explore.Nash on YouTube as well. The Nashville Daily Podcast is an Explore LLC production, copyright 2023.